wow. moment never, ever, ever gets boring, does it, when they finally hear what no. it might be worth. Hilary Kay, Mark Hill and Ronnie Archer Morgan all joined us now. Thank you for coming in, guys. Morning. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to be here. Thank it's you. It's an extraordinary show, Hilary. 45 years, testament to to our love of watching you guys look at these antiques and the extraordinary things that the people coming on the show have at home. What's it like for you and how has it changed? Because you only start on the show when you were a wee girl, really. Oh, yes, short trousers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I started in 1978, so that was the second series. Um, and it's changed hugely because when we started uh, back in the ancient days, you know, there was no such thing as the internet. There were there was, there was no Googling. Uh, what I would say is that um, there were hardly any textbooks either, actually, on my areas of expertise. And so you had this amazing body of experts that became a kind of living encyclopedia. Mm. And you knew that somebody on the team would be able to identify this thing, even if, if you didn't know what it was. So um, I think that's changed a lot because um, we don't have that that knitted knowledge mm. um, exchange. Um, and I think the objects have changed too. And, and you're looking at three people who have, have done quite a bit to do that. I mean, uh, I was working at Sotheby's in uh, 1977, and that's, I was dealing with all kinds of interesting objects which were not conventional antiques. They did not belong to grand houses or grand people. Mm. They were domestic objects or industrial objects mm. and I thought why aren't we seeing those on the roadshow so yeah um, it made it I hope a bit more inclusive you didn't have to be grand yes to bring something along yes to, to to find out that it was actually important not necessarily valuable but important and had a part to play in history yeah Mark when I watched that clip and even when you hear the music oh yes it because uh, you, you were the same as me i remember it as a little girl and i remember it being sunday yeah. and hair wash night before <laughs> you started homework homework before you started school again on the monday how is it now to work on the show i, I, I was the nerdiest kid yeah, yeah. and i used to sit down and love the roadshow and yeah. um you know it's it's literally a dream come true i mean i am the luckiest nerd in the world I think, <laughs> yeah. but i now get to work with these guys and it is all about the team as you said before and sharing and having seen these people on telly and now working with them yeah it's magic and ronnie there's a little bit of pressure on you guys as well because if someone brings you something you want to be able to tell them what it is and you don't ne ever really know what you're going to see um, do you ever feel a little bit nervous that you might not i mean you've got a vast amount of experience now but maybe when you started out you might not be able to give them the full No, I don't feel nervous about it at all because I've got these guys... <laughs> yeah. In the backup. <laughs> ..as backup, working on a table with them. And um, I, 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 have a, I always have an idea of what something is. And if it's not my actual speciality, I'll take it to somebody on the team whose speciality it is, just to back up what I've told the contributor. Mm. Hilary, you, mm. you started in 1978? Yes. What... Over the span of time that you've been doing it, I can only imagine some of the things that you've found along the way. That, but there must be something where, or, or certain things that either you know the story of the person who brought it along or the item itself that you will always stick in your mind. Look, you're right, there have been a lot of things. Um, and actually, to, to pick out just a few um, is tricky, but I suppose some of the really meaningful things have been uh, linked to the um, war remembrance programmes mm. that yes. we've done. You know, one was a letter that I couldn't read out. It was from somebody who had died mm -hmm. and was a letter back to their uh, sweetheart. Oh. Um, and the other was uh, in Etaple at um, the uh, Remembrance Day special where somebody played a violin that had belonged to somebody. Uh, he found the violin in an antique shop and he pleased the, put the pieces together, found the granddaughter of the original owner and played the regimental song on it in the middle of the graveyard. I mean, yeah. so there was much. not a dry eye no. anywhere. I mean, those are the things, I suppose, which, uh, you know, you, you, you feel are really memorable, yeah. but not necessarily valuable. No. Uh, Mark, you say you're the luckiest nerd in the world because you get to work with these guys and see these amazing things. We've all we've asked you each to bring something from your own collections that you can you can talk us through. So what have you got for us? I've got it looks a little bit like a sort of cigar case or something, but it's um it's called a penner. Right. And it dates from the Georgian period. And basically oh. you could unscrew it and it was everything you needed. If you're a Georgian gentleman or gentlewoman, 
to communicate on the move. So what we're looking at effectively is a Georgian smartphone. <laughs> <Love it. Basically. laughs> so how does it work? So you would unscrew this part and you've got sort of inside here. You would have your quill. There's a little cutter for cutting your quill. And then down here. So it's quite ingenious. Yeah. It's made out of brass. You would have ink. Like so there you go. It is like a multi-tool. Mm. Called a penna. Amazing. Together, like, called wow. a penna. So that's my favourite thing. Thank you. Ronnie, what did you bring? Well, I, I brought love how an Inuit, <laughs> an Inuit thimble guard. Inuit are the people that live on the coast of Alaska. Yeah. The coast um, that, where the Bering Strait meets Alaska. Yeah. And I bought a thimble guard and it's carved in the form... It's very sweet, isn't it's it? It's very it's seal. Cute. It's carved in the form of a spotted seal. <gasps> and the spirit of the spotted seal protects the thimble, which lives on the thimble guard. Wow. And where, where did you find this, Ronnie? I bought this at one of the London street markets. Did you really? Yeah. And how much did you pay for it? I paid, I think, £120 at the time. <gasps> and it's worth now? If a only there were some experts you could ask. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. It, it, to me, it's invaluable. It's yeah, priceless. Beautiful. This was a lifesaver, believe it or not, because sewing the garments that protected themselves from the harshest conditions on the planet yeah. was essential. And so that's why they carved a seal to protect the thimble so that important. made their protective clothing. They'd go home every evening after a day out on the, you know, on the ice hunting, and the women would inspect the men's clothing and stitch up any faults in it, because any fault in the clothing... Yeah. ..when they went out the Could next day free. and they'd perish. Oh, hello. Uh, thank you for visiting our This Morning YouTube channel. We upload tonnes of new content every single day. So hit the subscribe button, like all the videos and don't miss out. We'll see you in the morning.